Okay, I think a countdown is happening, but I'm going to count us down just anyway so that we know we're all on the same page. Five, (laughs) four, three, two. Welcome, bombshells and rock stars. You are on with Aviola Abrams of AviolaTV.com, and I'm so excited that today we have a self-love party with Asa of Shaws of Sunset. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm going to tell people a little bit about who you are in case they are uninformed, Asa. So she grew up in Iran until she was seven years old when she and her family fled as refugees to Germany where she lived for the next seven years. As a teenager, she moved to Los Angeles where she went to Beverly Hills High School. Asa majored in philosophy and psychology at UCLA and she speaks four languages. She is, of course, our favorite pop priestess, Asa Sultan Ramati. Did I pronounce your name correctly? Yes. Let me ruffle my hair real quick. <laughs> yes, it, it deserves a hair flip. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, that's me, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> she is a performance artist, a visual artist, a reality TV star, and an entrepreneur. She created the diamond water that I am drinking. Ooh. And... We are talking about how to live your life as art. So Asa, our Persian pop priestess, can you? would you like to start us off with a blessing or a prayer or? Yes, actually being here with you and with all the lovers out there, this is blessing enough for me so we can just go right ahead and start. I already feel very blessed to be right here with you right now. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for that. Well, my first question to you, Asa, is I just read off all kinds of things from your bio. How do you answer the question, Asa, what do you do? When people say, hey, what do you do? What's your answer to that? I have like a few question answers I like to answer it with, but I usually like to just say either whatever I can do or whatever I like to do. <laughs> I think that, you know, for me, you know, if you've seen it in my bio, for me, art, life, love, it's all sort of interconnected. I don't feel like what I do is so separate from who I am. You know, I, I live the way, I live my life according to my passions. Everything I do, I do with passion, and I don't do anything I don't want to do. So work, life, everything's really interconnected for me. Like, even in my artwork, I use my life as kind of... Uh, a way of expressing, you know, everything I've been through, and my journey becomes my art. So it's all interconnected, and I do whatever I can. That's what I do. It is all interconnected, and I love the way that you integrate it. You know, you have your Shaws of Sunset, as we talked about, but then your music career. What you know about gold? Oh, Kala. <laughs> oh, gee, you really know all the info. You know, it's and it's funny, people ask me about my music career, and I, I never look at it as a career or anything that I do. You know, music, I've always been a visual artist, and music is another form of expression for me. So I, I, I really miss making music the last year. I, I haven't been able to make any just because Diamond Water is my baby. And, you know, going from artist to entrepreneur is, is like a really uh, natural step, but it's a lot of work also. And whenever you have your own business, you know, as you know, and people out there who who have their own business, you don't clock in 9 to 5. It's like I'm really continuously working, and I love it. I love hard work. I don't mind it at all. But with music, you kind of need to have chunks of time where you can just go in the studio and vibe out, and it might take eight hours. or And I just haven't had that type of time, unfortunately. But maybe next year, or this year, later this year. And whenever the timing is right, I believe that it'll flow back to you, that the doors will open oh. in that way. And, you know. There's actually already there's some great opportunities. You know, People ask me in Europe and stuff, they want me to come perform out there. I, but I haven't had the time to dedicate that that I want to dedicate to it. So I don't like to do anything half-assed. I really get into things, and I like to just get really get my hands dirty, get into it. So if I can't do it that way, I'm, I'm not going to do it. I get that, Asa. And what we say in Guyana is soon come. So regarding more music from Asa, soon come. Soon come. Soon come, inshallah. We say inshallah. (laughs) Inshallah, yes. Same thing, same thing. So Asa, if I had to pick one word to describe you, my goddess sister, it would be courage. Because you are this, like, 
kick-ass priestess woman. You're the embodiment of what I teach when I teach feminine energy and as a self-love coach and columnist. And I work with women who are stuck and oftentimes seeking courage or self-worth. How did you become so confident? Like, what makes you, Asa June, think that you can march in and demand $10,000 a show, which was awesome, <laughs> when you never sang live before? What makes oh. you, Asa June, say, I can be on stage with this major Persian star at Persian Palooza. What makes you say, okay, art gallery, I'm going to do an exhibit, and I've never done it before. What makes you so courageous? That's a really great question. Well, first, thank you for the compliments. I feel already more confident for you to tell me these things. I think, here's the thing. I think that the only way to live your life is to live fearlessly. We all have fear. And most of us, actually, fear stops us much more than failure. So most of us, like, if you want to do something, before you even think about what the next step is to do what you want to do, we have 10 negative thoughts. Oh, my God, I suck. They're going to think I'm crazy. I'm going to be embarrassed. I'm going to be... And, and we have this mechanism in our mind that's always working on negative thoughts. So I think the first thing is you got to shut those down. We all have it. Even if you have to fake it till you make it in your own mind, just ignore those things. And you just go forward and, and you fearlessly do the things you want to do. You have to do things fearlessly and passionately. And it, I know it's not easy. It's not always easy for me either. But fake it till you make it. Fake it to yourself. Just throw yourself out there. Because you know what? This is your life. And if you don't do it, who's going to do it for you? I think all of us have a moment when we realize, like, if you don't do it, it's not going to happen. Once I realize that, I just kind of I move forward with as much courage as, as I can get together at that moment, and I just do it. Beautiful. Well, I'm cheersing Diamond Water to you for that. Cheers. Thank you for coming to the planet to teach Living Fearlessly, which I believe is a part of your lesson, sister. Oh, thank you very much. And by the way, actually, I'd like to say something that I made. Um, Please. I really believe, you know, we all, we're all teachers and students at the same time. You know, we all learn from each other. And my fans reach out to me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. And, you know, they tell me whether I inspire them or the things they like about me or don't like about me. You know, I learn from those things. And I'm continuously inspired by everybody who's on the journey with me. Because we're all in this together. You know, it's, it's a two-way street. So I want to thank everybody for that. Beautiful. It is a two-way street, and, and, you know, as I say often, we teach what we most need to learn sometimes, you know, and yeah. it is this simultaneous dance that's happening that people may not and be aware of. we all know what the truth is. We just remind each other all the time. And yes. maybe the way you do it really triggers me, and I go, oh, I get it now, and, and, and like guys. And, and, you know, for me, like, being on TV is a, is, it's a very powerful thing, you know, and I, I didn't realize this at first. And... Uh, Shaza Sunset is obviously a major hit and a lot of people watch it and it's it's a commercial success and with that comes uh, I think a lot of responsibility and I take it very seriously and I don't wanna uh, I think there's also a lot of people who want to teach and they don't live by their own example but I would like uh, my own life to give information to others who are also on a similar journey as me. So I don't want to just say it but then live this other life that has nothing to do with what I'm saying you know so that's really important to me. Beautiful. I so get that. And I know that your fans who are watching, and even those who are new to your work who are watching, you know, will understand and relate to that. That for me in the past year, learning how to walk my talk was really important. Yes. So, you know, so I completely get that. And so, one of the things that I know that people wanted to ask you, as I've been, you know, letting people know I was going to speak with you today, I'm hearing a loud noise. I'm wondering where that's coming. Is that on your side? I don't know. Uh, I don't think so, actually. I don't hear it. Okay, but it just stopped. Is the light too much? There's like sun in my face. Is that okay? There's a lot of sun. It depends on on the look you're going for. It's you, <laughs> you're stunning. We'll keep the sun. <laughs> you're stunning. It is like okay. a washed out look more than it was, but you're stunning. Hold on, let me move back a little bit. Maybe that helps. Hold on. Okay, like, we're adjusting. Like Got us adjustments. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, beautiful. <laughs> All right, so a lot of people wanted to know, um, you know, about being Persian. I know that I'm a, a definitely a fan of your show. I watch um, and talk about it with my mother and my sister because my family is from Guyana, so we relate. I'm the first person in my family born in America. You're a refugee. Mm -hmm. um, what does Persian? What does being Persian mean to you? So um, 
by the way, I have another friend who's from Guyana who lives in New York. I love I love you, your country. Yay. Um, being, you know, being first of all, I'm I'm really happy to be uh, a woman of color, and to be on on uh, TV on such a very wide level platform. I think that's already a big step in society that's happening. You know, it's because huge, yeah. all my experience was, you know, when you started, you watch the show. And I hear that all the time. People are like, oh, my mom loves you, or my daughter and I watch you together, and that makes me so happy. Because I think it's more than just TV and more than just entertainment. Mm -hmm. You know, think about when the first time like African Americans were on TV. Imagine yes. this little girl sitting at home. She's like, oh wow, I'm represented. Yes. You know? For me, it's it's a really special thing that's going on with our show. It's beyond just like a whatever reality TV show. And and I'm sharing my journey very honestly with people. You know, I am a refugee. You know, by the time I was 15, I'd lived in three different continents and spoke three languages at that time already. And that doesn't doesn't just mean uh, traveling or language. Every time you move and you meet somebody new, or you're in a new country, you're um, you're exposed to their culture and their way. And I think it really opens you up as a person, and you start kind of having more empathy, compassion, understanding, and and really seeing that we're much more united than we're separated. Yes. So I think at a young age, I, I started to focus on the things that unite us much more than um, what separates us. Like my best friend, Brigadis, who lives in New York, she's black, and we went to high school together. And when we first met, I moved here from uh, Germany, which is an African-American. I was a Persian, German, and now American. And the things <laughs> we liked, like whether it was eating or how we danced, or, you know, we just, there was so much fun stuff to exchange. And I think that's how we should approach multiculturalism, you know? That's so instead beautiful. Like, so beautiful. Instead of like fear or you know, oh, they're different, but we're so similar, all of us. We really are. We really are, and we have so much to offer and to teach to teach each other. That you know, when I grew up, I was bullied and told go back to my country and all kinds of crazy things. Rather than, as you said, the perspective of wow, what do you have to share with me? What can I learn from you? And let's let's share. Let's exchange. Oh, absolutely, and I'm and food is a good one. Like for me, whenever and I travel all the time. I love going to like to the Caribbean because I love like habanero peppers and Scotch bonnet peppers. Yes, and like, yes. You know, they they put this on their fish, or you know, like I I just love food, and I think food connects us. And by the way, people still try to bully me and tell me to go to my own country, and you can just imagine how that goes. I just start like Persian dancing for them. And nice. <laughs> <you know? laughs> yes, well, I'm rocking my Guyanese gold for those who don't, you know. <laughs> oh, they have a problem with it. <laughs> well, speaking of food, Asa, just just because I'm talking to you today, I had to, you know, prepare a spread. You always have like a nice spread oh, going wow. on Shaz. You know, I had some caviar in my fridge that I got earlier in the week, but it didn't last. Um, <laughs> But I have my I have my food here, so you know people definitely want to get. I to love know. I love you even more now. Have you noticed I'm always eating? <laughs> I'm, I'm just yes, like, I love it though. I don't I don't look at food as props. I I, I love to eat. I to me like I'm not I don't want to be skinny. Like I love my body, but of course you know I work out at I work at it. Can you talk about this one thing? There's a whole when you're on TV. If you say one thing. It's perceived as you're dissing the other thing. But you yes. know, for me, I'm a woman, you know, my hair is natural, my nose is natural, you know, my yes. body is natural. But when I say that, I'm not dissing anybody else's body type or the way they want to live. But I want to simply um, represent for women like myself and to, for little girls to know it's okay to be yourself. Yes. <laughs> about yourself. That's all, you know? Yes, that's exactly why I wanted us to have this self-love party because it's exactly what you said. Like, you know, this is how my hair, you know, grows. This is how God wanted my hair to grow. But it means that it doesn't mean that this hair is superior or your hair is superior. That we are reflections of each other saying, do you, whoever you are and whatever you want to be. Do you all the time, please. Like, if you wanted to, you know, like, blow dry it and bleach it out. And yes. Like that's beautiful too. It's all good, and you're representing that, you know. Yes. Yes. Well, speaking, Asa, of the way that things get blown out of proportion on TV. Yes. You know, like all great artists, you're a visionary, and like all visionaries, you're not always understood. 
And I believe that you have lessons in abundance to teach us with Diamond Water, for example. I know that it was controversial for those who aren't familiar with the show. Once the Asha, Asha ex, uh, showed us that she had buried $30,000 in gold coins in her yard, which I thought was the ultimate prosperity visualization. Asa, can you please explain to us the significance of the gold in the earth and the foundation and, you know, the law of attraction, yes. all of that? That's a good question. You know, um, I believe, well, two things. Number one, I'm a highly ritualistic person, and everything that I do, I like to create sacred spaces. Even when I wake up in the morning, the way I make my tea, I create a sacred space for myself where I sit down, I take the first breaths of the morning, drink my tea, and focus on my day. Similarly, when I was building this house, I'm building a house imagine from the foundation. What a blessing that is. And these coins are something that I've been in my family for a while, so I had them. And uh, before they poured the concrete, I just did a ritual. I walked around the premises. I burned some sage. I threw some corn under the ground because the Hispanic worker actually said in his country, for good luck, you put corn, like unpopped corn, you know, kernels. Yes, yes. I put that I put rose petals just because intuitively I felt like rose petals would be a wonderful way for me to celebrate this moment of building a house. And I put the goal to, um, for abundance in the future and also just wealth of heart, you know? And the um, concrete went over it. And uh, I'm, I'm just that way, you know? I, I really, um, I think it's really, really important for each and one of us to find sacred space and sacred rituals that are meaningful for us and everything that you do. It's, for it's so important. Yes, it's not a religious thing. It's not a it has nothing to do with a particular religion. It's just for you, you know. Yes, yes, and it's and it's it is important, and that's what happens when when people say, "Oh, wow." five years or ten years passed and I didn't notice that the time passed, it's because you're not taking those moments, you're not creating those rituals, as Asa said, and being grounded in the present moment, really appreciating that present moment. So Asa, I wanted to talk about your love life, but it seemed like you had something else to say beforehand. Do you want to say something oh, else no. first? I just, I'm, I'm having a good time. Don't worry about me. I'm, <laughs> trying to get out of, I'm trying to get out of the sunlight, but there's no, like... Well, then just stay in the sun, baby. You meant to just get, be in the sun right now. What about like this? If I get really close, hold on. <laughs> there. That's All right, no, you can ask me. That's ask me portrait. Portrait. Okay, good. I'm not wearing... Actually, I'm wearing... Persian coal and mascara, but I have no makeup otherwise, just because, you know, I was in the middle of working on art, and I wanted to be as I was when I talked to you. Beautiful, beautiful. I was working, but I have on a ton of makeup. And, um... You look gorgeous. <laughs> you look gorgeous. You Thank look like, you, my sister. You, you're giving me, like, Donna Summer, like, you know, very, nice. like, this queen, you know, with the yes. halter dress. I love it. Oh, nice. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I wanted to talk to you about your love life. You, ha Jermaine Jackson Jr. is the love of your life, you have said, mm -hmm. and your soulmate. What is his, his place in your life? His place is absolutely everywhere in my life. There's no place that is not his place in my life. Um, he, you know, we love each other so much, and, um, you know, I, I keep a relationship very private. I don't, you know, as far as TV goes, he was only in Shaw's, like, last year for few minutes just so people people are like are you married are you this are you that so kind of like to answer that general question and then leave it alone and you know we don't I really think in this world everything's so overshared between the social media and all this stuff I think it's important to keep certain things sacred and for yourself mm -hmm. you know and then our relationship is one of those things for me but he's you know I, I love him so much I met him when I first moved to America when I was 15 we went to high school together and uh, we weren't together then, though. We were both really shy. And we, I, we ran into each other like four years ago, and we've been together ever since. We're just inseparable. Beautiful. Well, what tips then do you have for us on long-term love and long-term relationships? Any advice mm -hmm. you would like to share? It's a good question. Um, I think you have to be really true to yourself uh, before you can even manifest that perfect person in your life. I think you have to stay true to what you want and who you are. I think so often in our society, uh, women, particularly women, men do this too, but I think we, uh, they meet a person and they start adjusting to that person in order to make it happen or whatever. I think if you stay true to who you are you will, and you focus on bettering yourself all the time, you will manifest the perfect situation and person into your life and the person you're supposed to be with. I really believe in manifesting your destiny in that way and, and your soulmate is your destiny. 
Um, and other than that, I think being patient and communicating, you know, um, we're mirrors for each other. When you're in a really, really close relationship, whether it's a friendship or with your parents or with your love, uh, they're a mirror. And so it's a reflection of who you are. And you have to always be working on yourself. And you work together also, you know, in the relationship. So you have to stay open. Did I just say way too many things? Was that No, you just said all kinds of very, very helpful things and very thoughtful things that I'm sure people are, are feeling grateful that you shared. Thank right. you. I'm Thank glad. you. Although I don't I'm I'm i I'm learning every day. I'm not saying I know so much about relationships, but you know, I um you have to learn. I think it's a, it's a growing process until you die, you know? Yes, yes. It's an evolution, right? Absolutely, yeah, all the time. And it does not end, trust me. <laughs> well, you mentioned once that you are a traditional Persian wife at home, that you cook a four-course vegetarian meal for your man every day. What does it mean to be a traditional Persian wife? What does that mean? You know, that's such a good question. You know, for me, I'm... Um, in my lifestyle, I'm almost postmodern, like the way I deal with my work and the way I'm outside. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm very traditional when it comes to my home life. And uh, people can tell if they look at my clothes or jewelry or what I talk or I listen to. But I think relationships, I love just like old school style relationships. And, and Jermaine's also very traditional the way I am. And, and the cooking isn't even part of that. I love cooking because I love eating. I think if you love eating, eventually you start <laughs> cooking. Yes. And, uh, you know, I, I enjoy making him happy, and I, I enjoy making food for both of us to enjoy. And, you know, that's, again, that's sacred space. When you cook for your loved ones yes, um, or for yourself, the act of cooking, you're putting so much love into the food and sitting down together, looking into each other's face and eating, that's all sacred space. And that's sacred ritual. I think that's really uh, something that's missing from our world today because we're always in a hurry or, you know, we, we do things in such a vapid way sometimes. I think it's important yeah. to you slow down and you, you know, you have intent in, in the things that you do and it means something to you. Yes, the intention. There's such power in intention. Just an intention. Yeah, easy. Okay, so here's a here's a, a controversial question, Asa. Okay. That you are in an interfaith, intercultural, interracial relationship, which I know in certain parts of Persian culture is very, very taboo. What was the community reaction to your relationship? Was there any backlash that you or your parents or your family experienced? That's a good question. I mean, um, you know all those words you said, interfaith, interracial, all this. Uh, I don't, uh, I think everybody who's been in love before, yourself, myself, everybody out there, I think when you find that special person, none of these things matter and yeah. it, it, there's no inter, there's only one, you know? And I'm very blessed as far as my family, I'm very, very blessed to be from a wonderful family and, and they obviously, they love Jermaine and we're all very, very close and we don't really... Yeah, those things aren't really a uh, matter. And, you know, my family is very interracial. Like, my uncle in Germany, his wife is from Ghana. So I have cousins that are half Ghanaian, half uh, Persian. That are teenagers. You know, my other cousins married to a Chinese woman. So, you know, we, we're very mixed. I could, I could tell that in addition to your, you know, your Rumi, Nietzsche, Easy E background that you were very intercultural because you you automatically knew the difference between Guyana and Ghana. And most people, when I say Guyana, they think I'm saying Ghana or Guinea or, you know, oh, and so no. it's important for us to know about other people and know about other cultures and, as you said, realize there is no really inter. Oh, absolutely. And you know what? I love other cultures. Remember in our, early in the conversation I was saying by the time I was 15 I had lived on three continents? I really think that that's the secret key to um, seeing the world as it is. Just seeing different people, their cultures, their food, the way they talk to their mothers, the way they work, the way they come home after work, you know? I think that really opens up your eyes. So anybody who wants to open up their heart and their mind should try to go travel. And traveling is not as expensive as people think it is. People, you know, I have some friends that are like, oh, I can't afford to travel. Traveling is it sometimes it's cheaper than living right where you're living right now. You know? It's true. It's true. When I visited Germany I, in Berlin, I stayed in a hostel, and it wasn't what I pictured you as a youth hostel. It was beautiful with students, and you know, I was with other students, and it was magnificent. How cool is Berlin? Isn't Berlin it amazing? Berlin is so much fun. 
So Imagine much that's fun. where I grew up. Like, and, and Hamburg, which is the other great city in Germany, is just like Berlin. But by the way, I'm talking to a really amazing art gallery in Berlin, and they want to bring my exhibit there right now, Berlin and Paris. So I'm looking at two different galleries right now. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Well, let me know, and maybe that'll be my repeat trip. That yes. when I, was in, I was in Berlin for the Berlinale Film Festival that they exhibited a short art film that I did, um, and it was an amazing wow. experience. Amazing experience. That sounds amazing. Thank you. Thank you very you're, much. You're a multifaceted diamond, see? See? Everyone who's listening, <laughs> we are multifaceted diamonds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Asa... Asa, although you are a Persian pop priestess, everybody has moments of fear and depression. As, and as you said, you know that you, a big part of what you've done is learn how to, you know, fake it till you make it or, and step into your greatness, you know, that people don't realize it's a process. Can you share with us what you do on days when maybe you're not feeling so good or you're feeling a little bit down or having a little emotional turmoil? Absolutely. That's, that's really good question too because it's Nobody's life is perfect and nobody's perfect and I'm far from it and I have many days where I don't feel good, I'm fearful or I'm just green, you know. Um, I think that one thing that's important is when you're not feeling good, I think it's important to nourish yourself instead of blaming or starting to get negative and kind of, you know, we're so hard on ourselves actually because society is hard. I think the first step is to give yourself love, embrace yourself. Maybe take the day off for yourself. Do something that makes you happy, something very simple. Maybe laying in bed and watching a movie, calling your mother or your sister, having your cousin come over, go eat your favorite food, and just make it slow. So that's if you're just randomly not having a good day. And as far as living fearlessly, listen, we all, we can all coast, but all of us get to a place where suddenly you're faced, and it happens all the time, with the thing that you're afraid of with whether it's the dentist, whether it's success, whether it's starting your own business, whether it's facing your father you haven't seen for a long time. In those moments, I think that's when your character is made, and you have to give yourself that little nudge to take that next step forward. You just have to. And then the rest will come naturally. I think we're born warriors. As long as we um, face the monster, it will always go away. You embrace it. The monster that you're afraid of, you go towards it and you embrace it and it will melt away and become part of you. Beautiful really advice. Do. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with us. And speaking of facing the, the monsters, that you termed yourself as the the Loch Ness of what was it, the Loch Ness of Loch Ness Whisperer. Whisperer. <laughs> yeah. Can you teach us the yoga hook move that you were doing with oh. Gigi that was good for stress? Let's just teach us. Teach us all. Okay, okay. Teach us so, all. so every time, so when you, whenever you're, you're just about to go off oh. and it's not going to turn out good for you. It's not, gonna, it's not constructive. Sometimes it's okay to go off, but whenever you're about to go that, slow down, take a breath. And you just double hook while you're breathing. Breathe in. Hook. Ah. Because that's okay. a tight thing. There's a move where they go like this. You just breathe in. Close your eyes. It works for my girl Gigi. It's got to work for you. <laughs> it worked for me. It made me feel better. Well, I was feeling great to begin with, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now I feel even better. Me. <laughs> so thank you for that tool. I, and yeah, I yeah. wanted to talk about physical beauty. That you talked about your hair and you know being open to other people's expressions of beauty, and you're curvy and gorgeous. And on one episode, I think you revealed that you were the only, maybe the only female cast member who had it, who still had her original Persian nose. And <laughs> yeah, and, and, and like, and, and you know, I don't, I don't care. But you know, when you're on TV, you have to be boxed. Like no matter what, you you're either the the drunk, the crazy, like the psycho yes. or the weirdo yes. or something. I get the box of the weirdo, which is, I'm okay with because I'm I feel a little bit familiar in that box actually. Weirdos but, unite! Yes, weirdos, oh, let's do it. Always weirdo till death. Yeah, but yeah, like, you know what? Natural beauty. I I actually was surrounded. Like my mom was always a natural beauty. So this is just something I grew up with. I I didn't. It's I I don't feel like I'm making some great statement and saying oh I don't. You know, I the only thing I might do, like I'll blow blow dry my hair, looks cool straight too, or you know, but I really like to take care of my hair. 
I, I didn't get a nose job, and this is the reason. I was gonna I was doing this project where I was actually documenting our per beautiful Persian big noses with a profile because everyone's getting a nose job and we're gonna forget how gorgeous our noses were. You know, my you see this face? This is my profile. My people have looked like this for five thousand years. And I don't need to make myself look more Caucasian or or whatever it is that happens to be in the beauty standard what's what's considered beautiful. I don't need to put myself through that. Now, do I, am I dissing people who do? Absolutely not. My right. closest friends have had nose jobs, all kinds of jobs. I don't care. But for me, I feel okay in the way I am, and I feel beautiful. And I want other little girls to feel the same when they look in the mirror. You know, they don't have to go do anything to be beautiful. If they want to, that's totally cool with me. But they don't have to. And right now, you know that there are little girls who are looking at you and saying, "Wow, she looks like me, mommy. There's my nose. It's okay. She looks like yeah, me." Yeah, see, yeah. And I, I, I actually really love my nose. Jermaine always says he was I like, "Don't your touch your nose." He doesn't want me to touch anything in my face. <laughs> <laughs> You're gorgeous. Keep it, keep it all. I wanted uh, to ask you, along you. those lines. You're welcome. What does self-love and beauty mean to you? Uh, it means accepting yourself. It means um, loving you. You know, again. So, so I'm on TV, right? And there's a bunch of things that have that turned into this. Loving yourself doesn't mean like you know having to feel fabulous, or it, it's not even such a big deal. It just means like, you know, have compassion for yourself. Take it easy on yourself. You are amazing the way you are. That's the that's where we start. Past that, everybody can improve on everything. And you should always work on yourself, but you're really amazing and you can do anything you want. That's what self-love is, starting at that point. And getting all these negative voices out of our heads, whether it was your mom putting you down, whether it was the bully in school, whether it was you're from another culture living in a different culture who, don't, who think you're weird or whatever it is. Getting all those, shedding those negative layers, like if you're an onion, shed the layers that are outside of you that have nothing to do with who you are. Then when you get to the core, which is pure beauty and pure love, that's your divine self, that's who you are. And I, I think that's the most important thing for, for people to realize, particularly young women in our society. It's a very, very tough, our society is very tough on women. Very tough. Um, and I don't, it makes me really sad sometimes, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, very important to know how beautiful and amazing these young girls are, they're so precious, right? Yes, yes, yes they are. And and the older women, like that, you oh. know, the other day I saw some, this woman and she was gorgeous. I was staring at her um, in New York City and I realized it was because she had wrinkles. I'm not used to seeing wrinkles because everyone's face is like pulled back. I was, I was like, why is this old, you know, older woman so stunning? And it was her wrinkles that were just beautiful to look at. Oh. And by the way, that's that's a really good point. I think that's another thing in America that's hard. I think there's it's very difficult for women to age in America. I mean, I live in LA, but I know all the big cities are like that. It's very different in Europe in that sense. Even in my culture, like in the Iranian culture, we have a whole um, in the Persian culture. There's a whole system in place for your grandparents as they grow older, and you know they move in with you, and 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 it's a, it's a beautiful thing. You know, it's a, I think it's important. Then when there's younger children in the house, they grow up with their grandparents learning something you can't learn from anybody else. I mean, I'm so sad. I haven't had a grandparent. My grandparents died. All four of them died when I was young, you know. But I wish I had a grandparent. I cherish your grandparents. They're very, very, very special. Mm, mm, I agree. I just lost my grandmother last year. She was in her 90s, and she was this rock and rolling, kick-ass woman. So... Yes. I'm sorry to hear that, but she's in a beautiful place. She is, and she's right here, right here. I feel her yeah. energy all the time. And energy, Asa, is everything. You know, everything yes. is energy, everything is vibration. And so speaking of Diamond Water, which has, you know, a prayerful vibration about it, you know, will you tell us, tell us about Diamond Water, people who don't know what is this that we're talking about? Well, diamond water, which is right here, um, you know, it's actually, it's an alkaline water, so the pH is 9.5%, and you know, my friends and I, in my circles, people that are really health conscious, they're aware of alkaline water, but you know, a lot of people actually don't know about it. The thing is, you know, our bodies are very acidic between the caffeine and the, and the meat and the dairy and, and the processed food. We're so acidic, so it's always important to make yourself more alkaline. 
do you have to drink diamond water? No, of course not. To be alkaline, you can eat greens, eat less processed food, less you know meat and dairy and stuff. And I think drinking alkaline water is really, really important because it flushes out your system. You give you detox. It's more hydrating than regular water. It gets into your blood, into your organs, and it just gets rid of the negative stuff way faster than regular water. So I, what's better than water? You know, what do we need more than water? It's the most precious thing. So I, I feel very blessed that I'm in a, in a position, um, and I've worked very hard, by the way, to make this happen for myself, to be able to... Congratulations. Thank you so much. And, you know, some of the stuff, like I, again, going, going back to intention, Everything I'm going to do, I'm going to do it wholeheartedly and with complete passion and the way that I, I see is right. So whenever we bottle diamond water, I always go and I pray there and I meditate on the water because I believe that uh, having those intentions, I believe that it's important. Am I saying there's magic in the water? And No. You know? But if you believe in the power of prayer and the power of meditation and the power of um, you know, positive words, then you know, it's in there. And I actually, you know what, you won't say that there's magic in the water, but I will. Um, not just on the <laughs> surface, you know, not just I hear on that, surface though. level. I hear that. You know, it tastes good. That's that's great on a surface level for someone who drinks only water and tea for me. But yes. also I'll add that, you know, there's a movie that people should see called What the Bleep Do They Know? Do We Know? And it, it shows studies that if water is preyed on or if you use the word love yes. over water, it's very different than if you're speaking hateful language that everything is affected. And so... Absolutely. There's actually... I'm so happy you know about this study. There's, there's a water institute in Japan. Um, yes. The Google water study in Japan, they'll find it. So he actually took the molecular, like molecules of water under a microscope, and it looks like little snowflakes. Yes, he beautiful. Played of, he played different kinds of music. It, it looked differently. Negativity, like saying hateful words in any language. Saying positive words, it would kind of blossom more. You know, it's whatever you believe or don't believe, but you have to hydrate yourself. And, you know, I hear this is the best water people I've ever drank, so I'm, I'm getting really good feedback, but I'm just... I'm really proud. I, I work. This is one of my biggest dreams of my life, and I'm still, you know, working really hard on it too. But we have really exciting news. I'm, I'm really, really blessed. You said there's good, there's good news. More good news about it coming. Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, just because. Give you it know, away. It's just it's, us. Give it away. You know, it's, it's, you know, we're, we're just really like we're we're gonna need to step up our production into into a whole new level because the the demand has been very enormous. You know, so far we've yes. been just getting individual orders and shipping them to loved ones across the country, and uh, it's we're getting really massive like major. Uh, Request for distribution internationally, which is you know, amazing. Beautiful! So. Congratulations! That's Thank awesome. You. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I want you to explain a little bit more, you know, about the process of Diamond Water Asa, because some of the people who are watching have not seen Shahs of Sunset and they don't know about the the actual diamond. Is it correct mm -hmm. that there that this is something that you started doing when you were 12 years old for your family? That there's an actual yeah. diamond involved. Can you explain more about? Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was I was assuming. Obviously, not everybody watches Shaws of Sunset. You know, when I um, what I was telling you about uh, being ritualistic. You know, I was always like that as a child. Also, when we moved to America, when I was 15 years old, we moved here from Germany, and um, you know, having done this whole migration for the second time, because the first time was from Iran to Germany. This time I was a teenager and you know, I was missing my family so much and being this far away from Iran, Europe is halfway. You know, so I I started kind of doing very specific meditations and having visions and creating diamond water, making it for myself, just as a way to connect to my heritage. This is how it all started when I was like, you know, fifteen. But has, so, did someone teach you to do this or did no, you just no, and that's actually, thank you for asking, did somebody teach me? I really believe that um, we need to be much more, into, we're so intuitive, women and men, but particularly women, we need to get much more in touch with our instincts, trust our instincts and our intuitions, because it's all right here, it's within us. We have to shed the layers of bullshit that we've packed on, you know, that don't mean anything. So I, I from the very from a very young age, I was always very intuitive and, and just medit nobody taught me to meditate either. I just did it, you know. And um, and we all know how to do those things. Just you go within. Instead of looking out, you look within. And then I had a vision about it and I started making it for myself and it made me feel so good. And then later on I made a song with my best friend called Diamond Water, which is very soothing <laughs> awesome. and 
it, it's very like a very pretty ethereal song, and you know, it just became, and, and now it's now it's this, now it's a product that I put out into the world, and I'm so blessed. There it is. How, how does the Diamond Water song go, Asa? You can't mention a song, and you're the Persian pop priestess, and you don't grace us with a line or two of it. Come no. on. Come on, I'm one sad. line. No. <laughs> no, you have to just, you know what? You'll have to just go on iTunes and send one dollar. Okay, all right. So if we go on iTunes, there, there's the Diamond Water song we can find there? Yes. That's not why I said it though, but I just I don't feel like singing it right now. It's a, no, it's very when you hear it, you know what I mean. It's very ethereal. We're very high energy right now. Diamond Water is very like, it's like a dream. It's it's very dreamy. So I I'm not in that mode at all. I'm right now I'm like, like ah! yes, I'm vibrating up here. <laughs> exactly. It's a very different vibration. You you'll know what I mean when you listen to it. Okay, all right. So I will let you know. So before we go, okay. I want to I want to give you a chance to tell people who you are outside of TV editing because we only see an edited version of you you know and and what the producers think is good to show to create the Asa character that they have in mind versus who you are so what are five things that we would not know about you um, as this artist this woman who has created her life as art it's a good question uh, one I love watching uh, NBA games and then German we do it together, but it's my own thing. I love watching basketball. I just love it. I, it, it, it relaxes me for some reason. So that's one Interesting. thing. Interesting. We wouldn't have yeah. known that, no. I know. And I'm not into other sports. I don't watch football. I don't watch soccer or, you know, hockey or any of these other sports. I just like basketball. Um, <laughs> the other thing is, one thing I have to work on, I'm extremely impatient, and I think that's the Aries in me. I don't know if you can relate or not. I just uh, like Yes, my father's an Aries. I understand. Okay. <laughs> so I, I'm extremely impatient. It makes me crazy to... In, in fact, for me to be able to... I can't wait for anything. If I have to wait for something, I have to just put it away and trust that it's going to be, and I'll do something else. <laughs> I'm just crazy. <laughs> um, what's another thing about me... Um, I like folk music. I love really just old. Um, I love all kinds of music, but I love like really old folk. That's super soulful. Interesting. You know? Yeah. Uh, what else? Two more. Two more. Okay. I have so many things. Oh, I love to read. Do you see all the books? I'm in my library actually. Um, see all the books. Yes. Yes. I'm a big reader too. What are some of your favorite types of things to read? I love, uh, I, I, I don't read any novels, unfortunately, or I've read like a couple, like old Russian, you know, literature, but mm -hmm. I love reading philosophy, it's one of my majors, I majored in school, I was actually only a psychology major, and I, I was reading all the philosophy books anyway, so I was like, oh, let me just get the degree while I'm doing it. I love continental philosophy, like Nietzsche, Schopenhauer, Heidegger, Hegel, those kind. Of, it's the German in me. I read it in German. Oh, that's a you lot of You read it in that. German. She reads philosophy yeah, in I, German. Yeah, I, that's a, a lot of people don't know this. I because uh, I grew up in Germany. I lived there. Right, I speak fluently German. The way I speak English, I speak German. So wow. I actually like to read um, everything in its original language if possible. So I read Rumi and Farsi. So I love reading poetry. Obviously, Rumi is my heart. Rumi so is I amazing. Read, yes. Like like. Um, you know, and yeah. What else? Do I have one more? That was I just one more. We need one, one more. Come on. <laughs> I have so many things. I'm trying to think what's. Have you noticed something about me that you think other people didn't know? Oh, you know, I think I think on Shaw's of Sunset, I I think people see me as as very chill and very relaxed, which I am. But I'm actually very high energy, and and I think that side of me is is not really featured, just because I think when you're on TV, they they have to box you, so it's kind of like right. I'm the box. But I'm very like I'm 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 an Aries, I'm a fire sign, you know. I, I'm really not that chill. I regular. get it. I get it. <laughs> okay, thank you for sharing that. That was good. That was good yeah. stuff. And you reflect it. like uh, actually one of my favorite Rumi quotes um, that. Uh, it's, Rumi has like so much. If, if if you're watching this and you're not familiar with Rumi and also Nietzsche, go you know, go out. and get to know both. Rumi will just feed your soul, you know, yes. um, feed your soul. And Nietzsche as well will make, make you think that Asa, the quote I'm trying to remember, the Nietzsche quote is something like, those who could not hear the music 
those who those who were dancing were considered weird by those who could not hear the music or something. Oh, see, like now you see why I love him. Yeah. By the way, those who are not familiar with Rumi but love Beyonce, I was so happy when the song came out because you know my line for my entire life has been um, being you know drunk by the wine of the beloved. You know, and it it connected my God. And I was so happy when her, love, when her song came out, which is called, uh, what is it called, Drunk in Love? Drunk in Love, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it yes. always was like a roomy thing to me, so I was very happy when I heard that. Yes, beautiful. And Hafiz is another Sufi poet that people should yes. get to know. Um, you're, you're very, very well informed. Yeah, this is my, this is my, that literally you are the living embodiment of everything I teach. And so it's like, you know, next talk I give, I'll just be like, class, look, awesome, let's watch. There you go. Oh, that's a very sweet compliment. Thank you so much. By the way, what we're doing right now, like, which is sisterhood, I mean, there's these words and, and we people throw them around, but, you know, it's so important for um, women to not put each other down and, and uplift each other because we're, we are sisters and, you know, I'm not a hippie. I'm not saying this because it's like, oh, free love or, or whatever. But, right. you know, very, very important. It, you know, we we are very connected. We go through the same things. And we're beautiful. Why tear each other down? And let's lift each other up, up and, and find ways that we connect, you know? And, yes. and I think especially on TV, it really bothers me. You know, I don't like it when, when women fight in these weird ways and just insulting each other all the time. You know, I don't like it. It's 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 literally that level of criticism that you're talking about that we see on TV. That I say that it's it's violence. That 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 yeah. is violence. It's abusive. and it's actually abusive. And and you know what? You're being abusive towards yourself. Forget the other right. person. Right. When I when I spew things at you, I'm really abusing myself. Yes. How are you different from me? You know, we're, we're really one. So right, right. It's, that it's all I a mirror. That you know, quantum physics teaches us that there's only you, there's only one right, in the yeah. universe, universe, and that you know whatever world you you see is the world you have created. So if you believe that the world is a negative, hateful place, you have to look at here. This is what you're you're projecting that forward, and so Asa sees the world as a beautiful place because that's who she is, and that's the world that she creates and projects for herself. Absolutely. You know? So when you meet a when you meet a beautiful girl, I. If I tell you you're so beautiful, I'm not taking anything away from myself, obviously, right? Because if I see beauty, it's a projection and perception. Yes. So we can, you know, spread beauty and love. And it, and again, this is not a hippie thing. I hate when people think it's some frivolous like. It's not a hippie thing. This is actually not. the next stage in our evolution. That I really, really strongly believe that you know that. The kind of this is this is all you know. It's yin and yang. So it's active, you know, and it's the doing and the being, and we need both. And we've been such a doing yeah. world up until now, the masculine energy that now we're all moving into this being, which is you know. Oh, and I'm so thrilled. And by the way, and for me, like it's an absolute movement. And there's pe people. There's a different breed, you know. We're connecting, and it's a movement of love and positivity, going and, and connecting to our divine self. And that's what. For me, Diamond Water was about. I wanted to put a piece of what I believe into the world and share it. And there's yes. no better way of doing it than with water. To me, you know, we're 75% yes. water, and and we need it. You know. Yes. And by the way, what you said about unity, I think that's a really. People often ask me, how do you meditate? What's meditation? I think a really good way of meditating, if you're new to it, all it means is um, being still closing your eyes and connecting to the oneness that exists in the world. And whether that's to you, whether it's God, whether it's the universe, whether what connects us, that's all you need to do. Every day spend five minutes before you go to sleep or when you wake up and just connect. Connect to everything around you and, and I think it's very beneficial. Yes, and it will transform, it will literally transform your life. Absolutely. Literally transform your life. You can heal, you can heal tears. You can heal cancer by simply you know, for example, and by the way, alkaline water, people have cancer, the doctor tells them to switch to an alkaline diet and drink alkaline water to be positive, mm. right? Mm. If yes. you don't have and positivity just means hope. That's all it means. If you have cancer or any kind of illness, you have to have light and positivity. Otherwise, you won't make it. Yes. So, I mean... That's so, that's so important that you said that, and you just reminded me, I'm actually going to share this diamond water with 
this amazing woman named Bershawn Shaw um, that she wrote the, the forward from my upcoming book. And actually, I'm thinking that I'm probably going to include this interview in my book because women need to re have be a part of this. But, you know, that she healed herself, Asa, doing exactly what you said. That they gave her, She had stage four breast cancer. The doctor gave her three months to live. She's coming out on yeah. a new Oprah show that's debuting in April called Love in the City. Doctor gave her three months to live. She went home, changed the way that she was eating, started meditating, and that was seven years ago. Wow, see? Yeah. But this is, these kinds of amazing miracles happen. They happen. And, 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 you know, even if you don't have cancer, we're all, we need to start working on this stuff now, you know, while you're healthy and, and happy. Yes. You know, and just kind of and share that with those who don't have it, maybe because that's the thing with hope is when you don't have it, it's very hard to get it. We all know what that's like. Yes. So if you have a, an abundance of hope and positivity and love, give it to those who don't have it. That's beautiful advice. Beautiful yeah. advice. Well, my last question for you, Asa, as I mentioned that I have this book coming out. It's called The Official Bombshell Handbook of Self-Love. Like and that. I'm redefining. It's the 13 sacred secrets of feminine power. And I'm... Like yes, and it, this is, it's all about this. That's why I said I'm like, I'm going to see if I can get this in there. That, you know, that... I'm redefining the word bombshell to mean a woman who loves and owns herself, mind, body, and spirit. So given that, Asa, Asa June, what makes you a bombshell? Oh, that's sweet. I guess I am a bombshell. We all are. I, we all are. What makes me a bombshell is um, my ability to connect into my heart and maybe radiate what I have inside it to other people around me. Mm. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. Well, I have one more question related to that then. How old okay. were you, Asa, when you got that, when you got this that we see, this sense of self-acceptance? How? When did you get that? You know, I, have, I, I really have to tell you, I was always this way. I mean, I was, I was this way as a child, you know, mm -hmm. already. But I think maybe um, as I got older, I understood it more. We all have everything we need. We're born with it. Yes. And what happens is we pack on layers around it so we can't find it anymore. I think the process of connecting to that is shedding versus adding on. It's not even knowledge that you need. It's just things you need to get rid of, you know, misknowledge or misinformation. And I think once we shed and, and just go to a more pure self, that's where the truth is, I think. That is where the truth is, and you reminded me of my favorite Rumi quote that I was trying to remember, which is something like, uh, "This is, I'm butchering the words. Look it up for yourself, and you'll see." But it's something like love, like that. Love is. It's about. It's not about finding love. It's about removing all the barriers that we have that we put up to love, and the love is and, already and there. Absolutely, and it's out of fear, out of, and usually it's out of fear. But I think back to our original thing, the very first thing we started talking about, I really think the secret is to just be as fearless as you can. Because you have yes. nothing to lose. You really don't, you know? You really don't. You really don't. Yeah. So like Asa sat there and the, the woman said, well, how much money do you should you get? And she's like, I think $10,000. Yes, because you yeah. have nothing to lose. I, and I know what I'm worth, you know. Yes. I mean, I wanted to ask for twenty thousand. I was like, all right, you know, I'll. I'll they might not have the budget. Cut the bargain, but, yes, yes. Yeah, you know, it was like, you know, ten thousand. But of course, that was also going to be with the, you know, business two business class tickets and then five star hotel. Yes. Which adds up to maybe about five thousand too. So I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome, and it is about knowing what you're worth, and and you know that's part of what it is with drinking diamond water that you deserve the best. This is your temple, and so why would you not? Put diamond energy in your temple. Basically, ladies and gentlemen, you, you don't wait for anybody to tell you what you're worth. I'll tell you right now, and you know it yourself anyway. You're absolutely amazing, and you can do anything you want to do. You just have to start. It's all you have to do. Your fear is stopping you right now from starting. Initiate it, and the rest will come. You have to work hard, and if you have passion and you work hard, you will have, you will have success. Yes. But you have to do those two things. Yes, beautiful. The, on, the, the only two keys you need to get whatever you want, begin and continue. That's it. That's right, right. Begin yeah. and continue. So how can we support you, Asa? How can people support your work oh. and what you're doing, what's going on in the Asa universe? So you're so sweet. I mean, I, you know, I don't want to, like, I'm not here to sell anything. I, you know, um, 
obviously, if you want to tune into my world and connect with me, you can connect through any of those social medias. I, I mostly Instagram. your music is on iTunes. Music is on mm -hmm. iTunes under Asa Sultan, A S A S O L T A N. If you'd like to try Diamond Water, we finally caught up with individual orders, so shipping now is only to like one to ten days, one week to ten days. You can get it at www.realdiamondwater.com, all one word, realdiamondwater.com. And actually, I, I, we're hoping by the end of summer we'll have distribution and people will be able to go buy it in stores too. But right now we ship it, you know, per okay. you have to order a box. And um, I also. I'm also working on a book, which I'm very excited about. Yay. Um, I have to see how I'm going to put it out. I have a couple of you know, offers, but I'm looking for the right offer that I'm working mm -hmm. with. I'm very excited. A lot's going on. I'm working on a new art project, um, and it focuses on veils, you know, women mm -hmm. veiling in my culture. You know, I'm, I'm just moving forward at all times at 100 miles an hour. So that's well, so much beautiful. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Asa, for the lessons, my sister. And I thank look forward you to, you know, continuing to indulge in all of the Asa-ness on the planet. <laughs> You're so kind. Thank you so much for having me. I love your energy. You're wonderful. Great You're work. welcome. You're welcome. And for those of you who are watching, please definitely support Asa and her work. And if no, one is, if no one has told you today, I love you. And... Namaste. I love you Asa. more. <laughs> I love you more. And the I love you guys. The bombshell in me sees and acknowledges the bombshell in you. Bye.